Dateline. Headline breaking news with a major dose of snarkification. Dateline, the Department of Injustice. The Attorney General of the United States resigned last week. <laughs> Leaving in his wake, Eric Holder exits with nothing but corruption, scandals, and worst of all, a DOJ that has shredded the Constitution from day one of his disgraceful tenure as the top law enforcement officer of the nation. While the left try to gloss over Holder's disastrous tenure as AG, Dateline will set the record straight. Eric Holder was the only cabinet member in the history of the United States to be held in contempt of Congress. Oh, you suck! And the reason he resigned is because on the same day of the announcement, he lost a court battle to keep his criminal activity in the Fast and Furious scandal hidden. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. When the House of Representatives voted to hold him in contempt, not only did 17 Democrats vote with the Republicans, but 107 Democrats refused to vote no in support of Holder. Wow. If you want a detailed account of Holder's criminal activity, please check out my latest article on the News Ninja website. There, I document his aiding and abetting the voter fraud that enabled Barack Obama to steal the 2012 presidential election to his many cover-ups from the aforementioned Fast and Furious to the Solyndra and IRS targeting cover-ups. We will be talking more about Holder in tonight's Dateline, but if you hear any Democrats praise what Eric Holder did for the black community, ask them why he sued to keep exceptional black students in failing and dangerous inner city schools by taking away their chances at a life-changing school voucher. Anyone? Anyone? The answer is, Holder sold young black kids down the poverty river to placate the huge Democrat donor the teachers union. Shame on you. Dateline. Starbucks. Smell the honest coffee smell. Ah, smell it. As if you thought the commander in chief could not degrade the presidency anymore, we now have the latte salute. Say it ain't so. As I have stated several times in the past on this show, Barack Obama has an antipathy for the military. If you check out my politics on Pinterest, I have created an illustration that shows the influence of domestic terrorist Bill Ayers on the president. Get to the point. Just a little self-promotion. Come on, what's the matter with you? Ouch. Sorry, it won't happen again. Okay. Let's not forget that it's not the first time he disrespected the Marines at the bottom of the presidential helicopter stairs. Once he was talking on his cell phone, maybe to Reggie Love. Oh no, come on now, baby. As I said, he was talking on his cell phone with his left hand and made the salute with his right. Proper etiquette and decency, foreign to Obama, tells you to pull the phone down for two seconds to not only salute the two Marines saluting you, but respect the military that serves under you. This was bad, but nothing like raising your right hand with a styrofoam cup in the same hand that you salute with. While this is not the bitch slap of the week, I think that the Marines that protect the President and would kill for him and would die for him have had just enough of the disrespect. Not pleased with the disrespect. I do think they might enjoy this just a little bit. Dateline Hollywood Actor Leonardo DiCaprio gave an impassioned speech to the United Nations last week. Say what? I know. I thought it was a joke too. <laughs> so El Presidente of Hollyweird did his best to keep up 
the floundering hoax of global warming. Of course, Leo forgot to mention to his fellow world leaders about his private jets, plural, that's jets, with an S. Okay. His four homes and a yacht he rented from an oil billionaire. Surprise, surprise, surprise. The UK paper's digital edition, The Mail Online, reports that DiCaprio took at least 20 trips across the nation and around the world this year alone, including numerous flights from New York to Los Angeles and back, a ski vacation to the French Alps, another vacation to the French Riviera, flights to London and Tokyo to promote his film The Wolf of Wall Street, two trips to Miami, and a trip to Brazil to watch the World Cup. Champagne wishes and caviar dreams. What they forgot to report was the time DiCaprio took his private jet, fossil fuel guzzling jet, on New Year's Eve to two time zones just to drink in the New Year twice in one night. Yeah, I said drink in the New Year. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit drunk, cause I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit drunk, cause I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. <laughs> But not only is this limousine liberal hypocrisy epic in proportion, but as we report here every week on Dateline, there is no global warming. That's the fact, Jack! That's the fact, Jack! Not only has the globe been cooling for the past 17 years straight, but the Arctic ice cap, the global warming hoaxer Al Gore claimed would be gone by now, has actually increased from 3.9 million square miles in 2012 to 5.63 million square miles in 2014. That's a 43 percent increase in the Arctic ice cap. It's useless, but we must try to ask the eternal question to one of the typical liberal hypocrites. When will you, Leonardo, pull your head out? <laughs> Dateline, the United Nations. It's a small world after all. The United States president has made many embarrassing statements in the past, but some have been called just simple mistakes, like these. For a treatable illness like asthma, you gave them treatment early, and they got some treatment, and a. Uh, a breathalyzer. You're an idiot. 57 states. You're a moron. But Obama and the administration are sticking by this now obvious betrayal of the men and women who fought, died, or remained in Iraq. Look at the new forum for promoting peace in Muslim societies. Sheikh bin Bayad described its purpose. Get to the point. I will get to the point. The point is, Barack Obama in front of the world while speaking to the United Nations just praised controversial cleric Sheikh Abdallah bin Bayah. Say what? Yep, the same Sheikh that in 2004 supported a fatwa that advocated violent resistance against Americans fighting in Iraq. Oh my God! The fatwa permitted armed resistance against U.S. military personnel in Iraq and it stated that, quote, resisting occupation troops is a duty for all Muslims, unquote. You disgust me. Not only did Bin Bayah call for Muslims to fight Americans, but he himself in 2009 issued a fatwa, quote, barring all forms of normalization with Israel, unquote. You disgust me. Not only did Obama sing the praises of this anti-American, anti-Semite scumbag on worldwide television, but he and his administration are sticking by this terror instigator. Shame on you, Mr. President. Even after outrage from the Jewish groups and other anti-terror analysts in the news came out against the propping up of this dubious shake, and what was the response from Obama's latest Bimbet spokesperson? He's a righteous dude. What's amazing is that just a few months ago, the State Department had to publicly apologize for tweeting out its support for Bin Bayah, but the president just issued his support for him at the United Nations, no less. I guess this isn't surprising. Barack Obama called for a fatwa against the United States Constitution back in 2009. That's retarded, sir.
Dateline, the United Nations Redo. It's a small world after all. As if the statements supporting the anti-American, anti-Semite Sheikh Abdul bin Baya at the UN weren't enough to embarrass this country, President Obama had to throw the race card on the podium in New York last week. I realize that America's critics will be quick to point out that at times we too have failed to live up to our ideals, that America has plenty of problems within its own borders. This is true. In a summer marked by instability in the Middle East and Eastern Europe, I know the world also took notice of the small American city of Ferguson, Missouri, where a young man was killed and a community was divided. So yes, we have our own racial and ethnic tensions. Say what? I know. I don't think he can help himself. It's a disturbing pattern. Hey, I don't make this stuff up. Okay. In front of the entire world, Barack Obama, while discussing the new out-of-control terror threats around the globe, beheadings of journalists and peace workers alike, the slaughtering of thousands of Christians by ISIS, a group his feckless decision to leave Iraq without a residual force gave birth to, and he has to bring up Mike Brown getting shot and killed after trying to take a cop's weapon from him? It's incredible. <laughs> the saying goes, if you don't have something nice to say about someone, don't say anything at all. This is Obama's take. If you don't have anything positive to say about your leadership in the world, play the race card. Diversion subterfuge. But that's not all I have to say about Ferguson. Get to the point. Did you know that the President of the United States sent more government representatives to the Mike Brown funeral than he did to the former Prime Minister of England, Margaret Thatcher's funeral? Talk about chicken Can I get an amen? Amen, brother. Amen. The woman who stood side by side with Ronald Reagan to defeat communism and helped release hundreds of millions from the misery of communism does not deserve as many representatives at her funeral as a guy who committed a strong-armed robbery right before his run-in with the police officer? You disgust me. Now I refuse to curse out the president on this show for disrespecting an entire nation by sending less representatives to one of their greatest leaders funerals ever. But... Piece of shit. Hey, it wasn't me. Dateline. Flashback. Houston, Texas representative Sheila Jackson Lee, who has always had her eye on Nancy Pelosi's crown as Queen Dingbat of Congress. Not pleased with the disrespect. Back in 2003, Lee made one of her more ridiculous comments. She called the weather racist. Say what? Well, she didn't actually call the weather racist, just the people who give the official names to the hurricanes. Say what? I just wanted to hear your reaction. Say what? Okay, now you're overdoing it. Get to the point. Sheila Jackson Lee, who is constantly tossing around the race card on the floor of the House of Representatives during her mind-numbingly moronic speeches, claimed that the weather establishment was racist and that, quote, all racial groups should be represented, unquote, when naming hurricanes. Okay. Of course, her fellow representatives chalk this statement up to another in a long line of stupid comments. Like the time when she was at NASA, which is in her district in Houston, and asked this about the Mars, I repeat, the Mars rover. Quote, is that going to where our astronauts planted the flag? Unquote. Don't, 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 don't. Of course, after Hurricane Katrina in 2005 and the devastation it left in its wake, Sheila decided that it might bring a bad connotation to the African American community to have a disastrous hurricane named, let's say, Hurricane Shaniqua. Oh, no, nah, come on now, baby. But we want to pick up the cause started by the Texas representative. We here at Dateline always promote racial equality and have been inspired by Sheila Jackson Lee in her fight against the weather. We have created our own extreme weather early warning system. We have constructed a device that will warn people on the ground of an impending hurricane. Wow! Let's say that Hurricane 
Billy Bob Cracker is coming up the Gulf of Mexico, headed right for the south coast of Texas. This is what our early warning device will blare in its oversized speakers to warn everyone. <laughs> Dateline, Moore, Oklahoma. As the gruesome details of the beheading in Oklahoma hit the news wires, a sense of shock could be felt nationwide. But as soon as the details became available, as usual, the left tried to spin it as workplace violence and not what logical thinking people could see was an Islamic terror attack. That's the fact, Jack! The perpetrator, Alton Nolan, converted to Islam and was radicalized at a mosque run by a imam tied to Anwar al-Awlaki, the same Anwar al-Awlaki that this administration incinerated in a drone strike for inciting terrorism abroad. The same al-Awlaki that instructed the Fort Hood shooter Nidal Hassan. The imam that is tied to al-Awlaki, Suhaib Webb was the Imam at the Oklahoma City Mosque attended by Nolan and currently serves as the Imam of a sister organization in Boston. The Islamic Society of Boston Cultural Center located in Cambridge, Massachusetts is connected to the Boston bombers Jokar and Tamerlan Tsarnaev. Wow! Now who really thinks this is not a radical Islamic terror attack but simple workplace violence? Anyone? Anyone? What I want to know is where was the National Security Agency? We need some answers. Where was the NSA? They have been spying on reporters, collecting data from all of American cell phones and online activity, and they couldn't even read Nolan's Facebook page where he called for the destruction of the United States and even posted a picture of an actual beheading a month before committing this heinous act of terror. Hard to comprehend, but that's true. This invasion of privacy and violation of our constitutional right to privacy looks more and more like they are targeting simple everyday Americans instead of what the NSA was created for, protecting us from terrorist attacks. What are we going to do here? If they can't even stop a terrorist that posts his ideology all over Facebook, I think it's about time we either abolish the NSA or we arrest every NSA employee because they have violated our civil rights while claiming to be our protectors and haven't protected either the people in Boston or Oklahoma or the next jihadist attack here on American soil. This is unconscionable. Dateline. Flashback. This from our September 8th show. Dateline. Not even a smidgen of corruption. While the president is known for his ability to lie with a straight face, this not a smidgen comment will come to bite Obama in the posterior sooner or later. The IRS scandal and the disappearing emails It's magic! is the blatant corruption part of the equation. The cover-up part of this ever-expanding scandal is the other felony committed by the internal revenue Stasi, and most likely White House stooges as well. But now, Eric Holder and his Department of Injustice has been implicated in the massive IRS targeting cover-up. Say it ain't so, Joe. Yep, this corruption cancer just keeps metastasizing. But what do you expect from the most lawless attorney general ever? It's incredible. <laughs> the point man for the DOJ cover-up of the IRS felony is an attorney who previously worked for Lois Lerner in the IRS. Andrew Stralka was working with Take the Fifth Lois and then moved on to work at the Justice Department. Talk about chicken sh I know, right? What does Stralka know about justice? <laughs> at the DOJ, Stralka defended his old co-conspirators, the IRS, against a lawsuit by a pro-Israel group that claimed that their tax-exempt status application was singled out and delayed because it opposed the President's policies. So, of course, the House Oversight Committee asked the DOJ to talk to Stralka as it is obvious as to a conflict of interest in the Justice Department and its phony investigation into the IRS corruption. Not only does the DOJ refuse to turn over the contact information to the House Committee, they say he no longer works there. But they even had the nerve to chastise the committee for trying to contact Stralka directly. It has gotten out of hand. 
And where is the man that's entwined in not only the felony targeting, but the felony cover-up too? And like that, he's gone. Dateline. Bitch slap of the week. Come on, what's the matter with you? For those of you who haven't guessed, yes, the resigning coward Eric Holder is about to be bitch slapped into oblivion. Watch this. A fist. <laughs> the top law enforcement officer in the country who felt the need to say, In things racial, we have always been, and we, I believe, continue to be, in too many ways, essentially a nation of cowards. What's the matter with you? Resigns and runs away like a little Biatch. He resigned because the Obama appointed judge ruled against him in his last sad attempt to keep his and the president's culpability in the bloody Fast and Furious debacle that cost hundreds of lives on both sides of the Mexican American border hidden. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Even though one judge ruled that the government watchdog group Judicial Watch had every right under the Freedom of Information Act to get access to all communications between you and the White House regarding Fast and Furious, and then Obama's judge bitch slapped you too. Ah. What's the idea? You resign like a little coward. For the chicken because you were held in contempt last year and now another judge just ruled that contempt charges may proceed ensuring your impeachment once the Republicans take over the Senate for that you quit like a little coward if you weren't a pathetic coward and believed you were right in hiding behind an illegal use of the executive privilege why didn't you stay and fight? That is so much crap. You coward. Quiet. Oh, and by the way, this next bitch slap is for the African Americans you belittle by inferring that they are too dumb and or too lazy to get a simple photo ID not only to vote, but use in general everyday activities like having a bank account or to get a cell phone or to buy alcohol or cigarettes or even to buy a mature video game. Oh, not so hard. And this last one is for the nine sovereign states that you sued when they tried to follow federal laws. From enforcing immigration laws and voter laws like removing dead voters and illegals from voter rolls. Oh, now that he doesn't have much time left at the DOJ until his replacement is found, I wonder what Eric Holder will be doing on his last days as Attorney General when he is supposed to be getting the Fast and Furious documents together to be handed over. Come on, what's the matter with you? Not so fast, you crook. Destruction of evidence is a federal offense. I hope that now that the contempt charge and the ensuing obstruction of justice charges, that by the way are supported by the DOJ's own inspectors general, I hope that all your transgressions against the American people will land you exactly where you belong. Coward. And that's Dateline for this day. September 29th, 2014. The Ascend Conservatism Show will be back after the commercial break and the Fox News half-hour news break. Stay tuned.